Well, we're gonna kick it off with playing the game a little bit to show you what's been done. Welcome to another video of making the game Wraithbinder with your old pal Wizard Foo. I'm gonna go ahead and use the controller today. Oh yeah, because check this out. The controller now has pure vectors. So basically, uh, with Songbringer in my last video game, I had all these input vectors were um, were actually binary. So if you had if your thumbstick was down just a tiny bit, right? It would really just be like a zero or one thing. Once you cross the threshold of about 0.4, it became a, a button being pressed down. And so that made sort of a little bit, it's weird, but it didn't really affect it that much, but you would think it would make it more clunky for its controls, right? Because you only had eight different compass directions you can move in. Um, but now with Wraithbinder, I've got vectors and movement. So you see up in the top left, it says vec. And then if I go a little bit to the left, it starts, right? It starts getting bigger, more and more negative. It went to negative one. You know, it's like a point, negative point three right there. And it smoothly goes up to one in the other direction. Same thing with like the Y axis going up or down. So that gets translated. Um, um, basically, you can see where the player is actually has their movement um, heading, their angle with that little green dot. So that there's a green circle underneath my player and then a green dot where the player actually has their 360 degree move rotation set for. So you can see where you're moving with that little green dot and you can see that it's a really nice smooth input, 360 degrees, right? That's pretty nice. So that, uh, that actually took some wizardry to get that all wizarded up, but I'm glad that uh, that's all um, finished. And even I've got it so you can rotate the camera with the uh, the other stick if you want. And you can also zoom the camera in now too manually. So I think I'll probably have an option so you can uh, um, do automatic zooming. So like the, the camera will just zoom for you to a good nice angle. Or you can have it manual where you have complete control. Um, so there is me hitting the switch and these gates lowered and that's that I did some artwork for that so it looks a lot nicer than it used to and also I've done a lot of touching up of the artwork for the ground you can tell the ground is a lot less uh, black and white um, there's really a lot less harder edges on it the, the things that have really nice contrast now are the player the player has really nice dark elements and stuff and everything else is a little bit less saturated so that it just looks nicer. It's easier on your eye, right? As you look around the level, things look a lot better. So um, everything down to the ground and the pillars. I read it all these frames of voxel, these models, where all these voxels are just a bit touched up and made a lot nicer. But here is the big thing. Here's the really new, fun, big thing uh, with Wraithbinder, and that is that you can steal bases. This is so cool. Check this out, I just killed that guy. So I'm gonna go ahead and steal this base. Basically, this is not my base. This is somebody else's base, right? Um, if I go to this pillar here and I hold down the A button, and if I if I can hold it down long enough and let and this, oh, and if this thing doesn't hit me just right, right, I can steal this base. Or if, say if you have a teammate that's coming in to help you here, this that would make it a lot easier to hit this, right? You have a teammate distract that turret while you steal the base. Boom, the base has been stolen, so now these healing stones are now on my team. So as I try and hit them, you know, they're, they're just flashing white. That means that they, they're invincible when I hit them. And uh, so they're on my team, and this little green turret guy, this thing right here, that will fire out ghost swords at anyone that comes near. So that's my base, right? I just converted that base. In fact, I'm in team mode right now, playing with three other players. So now this is their base too, so they can come here and heal. Or they can use this as a, a place to, to hide away when enemies are, are nearby. Um, but here's the, the um, what keeps it strategic. Um, if I go ahead and attack this this turret right here, I can go ahead and kill the turret, right? But then what if I want to go steal the base later? There's no more turret anymore, right? So you have to be careful about what you do. You can't just throw down a bomb anymore and be like, oh, I'm just going to go destroy this whole base. Well, you can, but now you've, you've lost the option of stealing that base. Right now I can go back here and I can steal this because I already killed the turret. It's really easy. And um, so I think this is going to add a nice strategic element um, 
to how you play the game and how and how the matches can go back and forth. That would be really fun too. Here's the original base for the other team. Let's see if I can go ahead and steal that. There's a trick you can like sort of like double tap right when the sword is about to hit you. And you can usually get it. Come on. Oh yeah! Stole another base. I think this would be really fun too when you're playing online with other players and you're like, I'm gonna go steal their base right now, and you're like, oh yeah, I stole their base. This is so sick. Um So yeah, I think this is a really, really fun element. I'm glad to um glad to have it in there. Um one other thing. Thing. Well, actually, I did cover everything already. Everything has been covered. You already got all my thoughts. Everything. Every. It's like, check us out. Even the artwork for these have been has been improved. Let's go ahead and another switch. Oh, that's already been hit. Oh, also I taught the AI how to use the levitate ability, the blink ability, and the boots now. So that's pretty neat. Um, let's see if we can find an AI that's going to use that. Oh yeah, this guy was using boots right here. Hey, he's using levitate. Sweet. They're not very intelligent about when they use levitate yet. But it's really good to at least have them sort of trying to use Levitate. You know, before that, I was really the only one around here that was using Levitate because I'm a human and they're AI and they're only as good as they're programmed to be at this point. We're just all sitting here. What's up with this, what's up with this AI here? There's an AI just sitting right next to a base I stole. Is that what this is? Yeah, he's just sitting there in the corner with his shield up. He's <laughs> You're about to die. Oh, he's not dying. Okay, so there's a new mechanic. Bas well, basically you cannot die from something that's not a player. So, since it's Wraith Binder and you know you once you when you die, you switch teams, right? So, um So you can't just have like a turret this thing here. You can't just have a turret kill you. And you can't die by falling off the map either. If I just go fall off this map a bunch of times, I'll get down to like one health, but it will not do that last killing blow um, unless that's that blow comes from a player. There we go. And on seven one, there's still what other player somewhere? See, this is when you need like a player locator, like some kind of like item you can use that shows... Yeah, hell, here we, here we go. What are you just sitting there for? What are you doing up here? Oh, I checked this out. This is kind of a fun thing. You can jump and then use your shield. Well, that's kind of hard to do with this button set up. I get my fingers like... Oh, there we go. This is cool. Yeah, I jump and then shield. And you can land on... Here, I'll land on this... I'll land on her. And it's neat with the shield because it, it sort of like pushes her back. See that? Boom. So I think it kind of, I think that'll be pretty fun too. Like a nice little, uh, whoops. That'll be a fun element to be able to play that way. That little style. This is about to be for the win right here. Oh, Team 1 victorious! I gotta work on this ending screen too, like add something, like at least a recap of how many kills, deaths, assists you had, uh, that kind of stuff, some statistics would be really nice. Why did it crash? I thought I fixed that. Oh well. Well, so there you go, another video making Wraithbinder, some fun stuff um, being added, and more fun stuff coming. Um, I'm really, really excited to have that artwork fin like just refined just a little bit because it's so much easier on the eye now. Like looking at the level, I I'll show you really quick, guys. So let's let's take a look at that really quick just to uh, see the difference between like the ground. Let's go change all the ground entities. We'll take off this uh, shading.
So what that's gonna do is it's gonna raise the shading level to the default, which is 0.4, and I had the shading at 0.1, so it was a lot less, like a, four, a quarter of the shading. Um, and so this is gonna make the, all the ground entities look, see now all those hard lines now on the ground? And it, it doesn't seem like much, right? It's, it's not really that big of a deal to have these dark lines underneath the player, but it really distracts the eye. Check this out. If we go, let's just compare some screenshots. Let's do a screenshot here, right? And then we'll do a screenshot with everything back how it was. This will illustrate the difference between these two, and this has been this this technique has been applied to everything that's sort of a background element. So the pillars, um, these healing lanterns, everything this, and even this dais thing that goes up and down right here in the middle. That technique has been applied to all those, and uh, it's really it's, it just really makes the character pop off the off the screen, and also is easier on your eyes. It's just, so much stuff on my desktop right now. Okay, here we go. I think it's these two. Yeah. So here we go. Here is, here is before, sort of. You're not seeing the darkness of the pillars. The pillars were a lot darker actually, and but now they're just so much nicer and softer. But look. So here's before with those these dark lines you can see them right here these little dark lines right if we turn on this new screenshot boom it's a lot softer see how that ground now is sort of way more backgroundy looking than it was so so that technique is really pleasing to my eye as an artist um and uh, I'm really, uh, really happy. I remembered that I added that feature in there. It's like, well, I can change the entity's shading. Why don't I just do that? So that turned out really good. And uh, and also being able to steal bases is just so fun, so awesome. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll hit you with another video later on next time. See ya.